Missing Persons Ontario, August 2002 In August of 2002, the Ontario Police reported the disappearance of four high school students. The only clues about the possible whereabouts of the young people were some maps drawn and found in the home of one of the missing students, Katrin Ziegler. The police focused on patrolling the vicinity of the school, as well as less crowded wooded areas. After five days of searching, four abandoned backpacks were found on the side of an unnamed road. Some identification documents confirmed the identities of the four lost kids. The search team ventured into the dense forest, following any trace that indicated the location of the students. After a few hours, they found nothing but trees, bushes, and endless muddy paths, until they came across a rather peculiar area. Monoliths with highly oxidized religious symbols were found scattered for miles around. In the same area, huge excavated pits were found, but they were completely empty. A possible cemetery was suspected. However, no headstones were found, nor were there any records of a graveyard in the area. In the depths of the forest, the police abruptly came across a large ancient building. Next to it, a couple of cabins and sheds. All of them had the inscription of a large insect drawn in vivid colors. The surrounding areas were searched, and no human or animal activity was reported. When the police entered the mansion, the first thing they found was a rudimentary altar, and on it, a moth of enormous proportions apparently preserved through taxidermy. In the other rooms, similar crucifixes to those scattered around the forest were found, as well as huge drawings referring to the large insect. One of the books found on one of the altars was titled, The Resurrection of Mrahaj. The same name was found on inscriptions of vessels and crucifixes. A few small doors and hatches were found inside the mansion, all leading to the basement. Once underground, the police found a large room full of chains with apparently religious symbols. Crucifixes and figures of strange insects seemed to be the trend. One of the two hallways in the basement led to a small room where four statues of men were found in a prayer position around a small hole filled with mud. The other corridor, much longer, seemed to extend several meters beyond the main house. About 20 meters ahead, a door separated the hallway. The police reported a strong smell of ammonia and formic acid due to the risk of poisoning. Quick photographs were taken, and there was no contact with what was found inside the room. During the evening, a special team cordoned off the surroundings of the mansion and completely covered it with a tarp. Due to the toxicity of the location, it was decided to send in a specialized group for handling highly volatile substances. On the highest floor, the specialized team went through every room, each of which had drawings of giant insects. However, the most impactful discovery was made upon entering the attic, where they found the same bodies wrapped in plastic, just like in the basement, but these had visibly strange and hardly recognizable heads. The experts determined two possibilities. First, they could be surgically intervened corpses. Second, corpses of hyperdeveloped larvae in a partial state of dissection. Additionally, a portrait of a man was found who may have been one of the leaders of the cult, or a revered figure. Finally, the Ontario government decided that the mansion should be burned immediately and covered with a steel dome with permanent military surveillance until the case was resolved and the place completely secured. 2021, a man whose identity we will protect posted a story on his Instagram account showing the following footage from his security camera in the province of Quebec. Holy shit! Some sort of moth-worshipping cult that somehow morphs its followers into anthropomorphic insectoid beings for heretofore unknown reasons. That's pretty sick. I wish you guys could turn into bugs. Now, when looking at this humanoid larva, the obvious question is, would you stick your d What's the deal with all these bug people? It appears that members of this cult, or something else, are either capturing or recruiting people in order to transform them into giant moths with some sort of anomalous interspecies metamorphosis. This process, of course, has many parallels to the Kafka classic Metamorphosis, which goes a little something like this. As Gregor Samso woke one morning from uneasy dreams, he found himself transformed in his bed into a gigantic insect. Yes! Fuck yes! <laughs> Finally! It's likely that all of the religious iconography signifies that to this cult, the moth is sacred and to be worshipped. Not only that, but the transition from human to moth tells me that the moth is possibly thought of as the holiest of forms. Something for average cult members to aspire to. This means that the cult likely has some unknown ritual to start the transformation from human to insect. 
It's likely that this cult, like many others, uses multiple brainwashing techniques into getting their members to believe in this moth propaganda. One might think that the kids were inducted into the cult, but their disappearance may signify more of an insectoid crusade. I mean, if I were a cult leader running around turning people into moths, I wouldn't leave four perfectly good backpacks behind. It's possible that the members of this cult kidnapped the kids and transformed them into bugs, thinking it was a good thing. Like when all those conquistadors thought murdering people to send them to God was a good thing. Convert or die my ass, I'll convert those overgrown armored choir boys into skeletons. Now that we know this moth cult is likely converting their own members into moths, as well as kidnapping non-members to mothify them, we can move on to other questions. For instance, what was the toxic gas filling the metamorphosis room? And what were all those holes dug in the ground for? Well, many species of insects release ammonia, as well as other gases when metamorphosing. And this is likely what the gas is coming from. The holes are likely dug for the early larval stages, like a honeycomb for a bee larva. Eventually, the manworms burrow up out of the ground and build their own man cocoon. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now. This makes me want to convert Yellowstone National Park into the world's biggest Walmart. But I don't know. Insert a leaf in yourself. After seeing all this bizarro shit, Canada decided to burn down the house. Evidently, that didn't stop whoever the cult leader was. Because it looks like another giant moth just pulled up, spelling doom for any nearby lamp emporiums. I was still confused about this whole situation. Like, yeah, guy turning other guys into moth. Pretty straightforward, right? But my biggest question is why? Why the hell is he doing all this? For answers, I decided to go to the most powerful anomalous entity I know. Google search. After googling cult of Mrahaj, I found this cult where a guy, uh, quote, proclaimed himself to supersede the deities of all faiths and instructed sick people who sought his help for various ailments to drink his urine and consume his feces and phlegm, according to police. Um, that's not related, but I wanted to mention it so you could see that I at least tried. That's all we can discern about the situation so far, but there are more moth tape entries in this series, so maybe I'll come back and check out the rest if you guys respond well. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, and watch all my other videos, or I'll turn you into a moth. I'd like to thank Anomaly for making this amazing piece of moth. You should go check out Moth and their other work. Shout out the Inner Circle. Love y'all. <laughs>